Good morning, good morning, good Saturday morning to you. Tina C. Hines, your life transformation specialist, coming back to you with a message that is derived from last night, <laughs> from last night's uh, oracle card reading, as well as conversation. And um, I just wanted to tap into that a little bit further. So I'm going to wait for Facebook to start bringing all of you in. I'm going to say all my good mornings to you and I am going to do my my sharing. So if you could hold on a second. Um, see, I knew I should have did something before I started this and I didn't do it, but I'm glad you're all here. If you say good morning, say hello, say, say something. Oh, that helped a lot. Hi, dolls. Glad to have you back. So just give me a second because I'm playing. I'm playing with all these little buttons because I'm doing this from uh, my phone. And I want to make sure, well, I can't share it in some of my groups because I should have did that before everybody got started on here. But that, but that's okay. That, that's okay. I'm, I'm going to just give it a minute. So don't be shy. Say hello. I promise I don't bite. <laughs> I, I promise I don't bite. Um, you see, I'm in a new space or a different space than I normally am. Um, I am in, in one of my other rooms that I decided to make as my, um, my space where I have all of my healing crystals, my protection bracelets, um, my oracle cards, and all of the yummy goodness uh, that I have to continue supporting you, my sisters around the globe. Hi, Virginia. Good morning, my sister. So last night we were talking, I was doing Oracle card readings and um, we were talking about the past and how the past, um, what did I say? Your past is causing problems in your presence, present, and it's impacting your future. Somebody could capture that if you can. Your past is causing problems in your present and it's impacting your future. So I want you to, I, I want you to take a journey with me and Give yourself permission to just go there for just a little bit, just a, just, just, just a little bit. You don't have to stay there. And by the way, if you were watching the replay because you don't see live at the top, please click hashtag replay and, um, you know, let me know if this message resonates with you. Your past is causing problems in your present and it's impacting your future. And what, what do I mean by this? There may be certain situations in your life that you may have suppressed. You may have swept under the rug. You may have totally ignored and saying, I'm over it because it's been 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. I'm over it. But somehow, some way, there are remnants of it that are, that are starting to show up in your present. And so because the remnants of it are showing up in your present, then you're trying to figure out how to deal with it now because everybody got stuff to do. Everybody right, I got stuff to do. You got stuff to do. Y'all know I wanted to use the S word, the other S word. You got stuff to do. You got plans. You got, you got goals. You have goals that you wanna reach, plans that you wanna bring to fruition that's going in your future. But here comes the past reminding you of what was done to you, what was said to you, how you responded to it to wreak havoc on your present. And so now you're trying to maneuver your way into figuring out what am I going to do with it? So I'm going to be, can I, can I be honest with you? Yes or no? Or are you ready for me to be honest with you? Because I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be transparent with you. But I'm loving you. Because I think you've given too much to your past. Your past helps you to grow to what you desire to be. 
If it was something that was not so positive that happened in your life, you're going to do your best to try to change it. And if it was something that positive that transpired in your life, you're going to do, to do more to invite that into your life. But the choice is always yours. Am I going to live in the not so positive place or am I going to live in the positive moments? And I'm going to extract, am I going to extract what serves me best as I'm in my presence and working towards my future? So here's my straight, no chaser, with love. <laughs> The person who abandoned you, you can't change it. The person who hurt you physically or emotionally, you can't change it. The person who tapped into your low self-esteem, you can't change it. You can't change them. The things that were said, you can't change it because it's now, it's in your psyche. But you can change how you choose to deal with them. So the pain of your past doesn't wreak havoc on your present. We all have the gift of free will. We all can make a choice of how we choose to live our life. We all have a choice of, do I want happiness or do I want to still continue to hurt? We have a choice. I don't know about you, but does, uh, does hurting feel good? Does staying locked in and locked down and locked up Self-imposed feel good? Because when I hear my sisters say, oh, things are going bad in my life. Things are going horrible. I'm like, okay, but what are you doing to make it different? Well, I've tried everything. No, you haven't. You just tried some of the things that you thought would help you. You went to your comfort zone to do some of the things that appeared to be easy for you, that made sense to you. So you went back to an old habit that didn't help you in the first place. And now you're still continuing to hurt because it was, the, it was temporary. It was simply a band-aid put over a wound that needed to be healed. And we are unwilling to take the steps to truly start healing. And you say to yourself, but I'm over it, Tina. You're not over it if you're still remaining stuck in that place. You're not over it if you're still allowing it or them to wreak havoc over your life. To have a key to have that certain type of power that you've sort of given them and you haven't taken back. So you have to ask yourself, do I still want to live in the past with my pain or do I want to live in the present and look forward to a better future? We keep saying we don't have a choice. Who said? Who did you give that much power to that's telling you you don't have a choice to be different? You don't have a choice to travel the world. You don't have a choice to get that degree or that next degree or that next degree. You don't have a choice to where you want to live. Who said that? You don't have a choice to just be free and do whatever the hell you want on your own terms. It's funny because I'm writing some 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 content and in the content i started thinking about what some of us or how some of us how messages were passed down 
Do good in school. If you can, go to college and graduate. Find a good job and don't leave. And if you're lucky, get married to a good person who will be able to provide for you. And I call them the, the family golden rules, some of the family. But as I'm sitting there re writing it, and I'm just like, but what about your happiness? Does anybody remember being told, make sure you take care of your well-being. Make sure you're happy. Make sure that you are living the life you want, you desire, you need. Do we hear that enough? When I reflect back to my grandmother, not Grandma Jenny, y'all, <laughs> but my, my mother's mother, I looked at her. This woman who was taking care of 10 kids and me, because I was the firstborn grandchild, and observing how she managed to take care of 11 people. Of course, the older ones were, had their jobs and they were doing things as well. Some of them not so good, some of them good. But how did this woman, this matriarch of our family at the time do it? She wasn't at the time married. She was single, running a household, working a job and she did it. Some of us struggle with one kid, with two kids, but 10, eight girls and two boys. Y'all know that house was fire with eight girls. All the moves moving around there. But rarely did I hear my grandmother say, take care of yourself. She was always taking care of her children and her grandchildren and her parents. But I never heard her say, take care of yourself. Even when I think back to her mother, rarely did I hear her mother tell her daughters, take care of yourself. Make sure that you're okay. So we got to switch it up a little bit, ladies. Hi, Katut. We got to do something different. We have to be different to take care of our minds bodies and spirits to not allow our past to wreak havoc on our present that it impacts our future what are you willing to do different how are you willing to shake it up a bit how are you willing how are you willing to expose taking care of your physical and emotional well-being to other people what are you willing to share with them, that message that perhaps you missed getting? You have control over your past. No, you can't change it, but you damn sure can learn from it. And you can say, I don't want to live there anymore. There are certain pieces of it that no longer serve my higher good. So I'm not gonna live in that particular space anymore. We can't continue being mad at the people who just never figured certain shit out. We can't. If I were to hold all of the animosity that I had in my past towards that boss who just never got it, it would have wreaked havoc over the rest of my career. If I had have held on to my son's dad who just never understood or never wanted to understand that he had a child who had a different kind of need I can't keep living back there of what he was not capable to do. That's his stuff. We can't keep holding on to what other 
people were, didn't say, didn't do, didn't commit to, didn't know how to, because there were certain things that they didn't know or they chose not to know. And we're allowing it to impact us. In some form or fashion, we're all guilty of it in a way. We can just say, oh, Tina, that wasn't me. I, I was fine. Mm -mm. There's a little something, something that annoyed you. And every now and then it may come, it may have a flare up and you may be like, "Woo, that, that, that got me. And so you go sit there for a minute and you process it and you start thinking about all of the things you could have done to change it. You could have, or all of the things that you did wrong. Some of it, you were a child, so you didn't know what you were doing wrong, but you're still holding on to it, trying to figure out how to change it. And you choose not to get the right, keyword, right support in order for you to start feeling different. Hi, auntie. In order for you to start feeling, feeling fulfilled. In order for you to identify that true happiness. Everybody write the word happiness. I always encourage my sisters to write certain keywords because this is the word that comes up to me that you need to feel. And sometimes by writing it, you feel it. By writing it, you're inviting it into your life. By writing it, you're saying it. By writing it, you're releasing something. I like the physical writing because it allows me to capture those moments. But even by typing it, you're feeling something. You're infusing something. You're inviting in something. You're saying, I'm willing to accept this. So when I say, write this word down, there's something I want you to get about it. Happiness. <sighs> that brings up so many triggers. It takes me to moments in my life where I was the happiest. It supersedes the moments when I was not so happy. It supersedes it. It overshadows it. Because the key here is you want to continue to invite in more of what you desire. So it can block and create a boundary around you of what you do no, what you no longer desire. See, oftentimes we keep saying or repeating what we don't want. So you're telling universe, this is what I don't want, but you're not being specific of what you really desire to have in your life. This is what I want, universe. This is what I desire, God. This is what I need, Allah. This is what I want, need, deserve, and worthy of having. I'm inviting it in. Versus all of the not so positive. Because when you keep speaking on the not so positive, it's still sprinkling itself around. I, 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 I say this often. Happiness is over here. It's over here. Everything else leads up to the happiness. So that means that work is required to get there. It's required for whatever you de desire. I want a better relationship, which is going to lead to my happiness. Well, what does it take in that better relationship? And you can't place all the ownership on the other person because maybe they are not ready. But you lead by example. I want a better job. I want my business to flourish. I want my children to be okay. But okay, you want all of this happiness, but your happiness can't be dependent upon other people. Your happiness has to start with you, within you. Parents. We will always, often say, as long as my children are happy, I'm good. Now, some of y'all, most of my following, they got the teenagers. Y'all know they were interesting when they entered that 13, 14, 15 bracket. They were some interesting people who were not always happy. So-and-so said something about me at school. 
They're stressing about their work. They're stressing about getting the good grades that we've encouraged them to get and not come home with anything less. They stress about it. They got some, some stuff going on that we don't even know about. And yet we're basing our happiness on these teenagers. I ain't lying. If I was to base my happiness on my son, my, I would be up and down. I would be up and down. But I had to find the happiness within me. And he has to find the happiness within himself. And if I recognize what truly makes him happy, I need to help cultivate that so he can experience more of it in his life. Because I have to guide him because there are certain things that does, doesn't click for him. But I can't overpower it because when I come overpower it, it shuts it down. So I, I have to be observant of that. Yeah, Tanita, them teenagers, they'll get us every time. Hi, Kalila. They'll, they'll get us. So we can't base our happiness on our children. We can't base our happiness on our family members. We can't base it on our bosses. We can't base it on our employees. We have to go in. And if your past is wreaking some havoc over your present, handle it. You don't have to handle it on the grand scale. You can do it at small increments at a time. But handle it. Let somebody help you. Stop saying I've tried everything. That's like saying all women are or all men are. I'm like, you haven't talked to all women. You haven't talked to all men. So you can't base it on the couple of experiences that you've had. You have to say these people or this certain demographic of people that I've dealt with but you can't say all, because you haven't tried it all. You haven't talked to all. We, 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 we grow comfortable in our certain circles, but sometimes you have to step outside that circle because that, that couple of circles, they, they ain't getting it. They're not getting it or they're not going where you are trying to go. They're not growing where you are trying to go. And vice versa. Thank goodness Bali gave me a start to understand finding my happiness. Well, funny you should mention that, <laughs> Virginia. Um, I can honestly say, as the person who facilitated the, the retreat, the retreats that I do, in case you don't know, I do international retreats every year for the past eight years. We've gone to Jamaica, Turks and Caicos, Anguilla, and Bali. And some of them are repeats. And this was the first year that I was truly an observer. Truly an observer versus being so in deep into the transformation that was happening. And y'all owe that to Grandma Jenny. There was a reason why it was supposed to transpire the way it did. So I could step back and just observe. Observe those individuals who were brought in to do the transformation on my behalf. And through so many messages that the ladies received, they recognize I, I call Virginia my, my nurturing your inner child poster girl, poster, poster woman. Because she tapped into that, that, that little girl within from Dominica and really allowed her to come out and play. She, in essence, was like back in the schoolyard, swinging on swings and laughing 
genuinely laughing. It wasn't forced. And then when the ladies went to the elephant safari and they had the experience of riding the elephant and touching the elephant and it reminded me of when you go to the zoo but all you could do is pet them. You couldn't ride them. And the experiences that some of the ladies had in having a cooking class or being in a magical museum where they could just act like they were within a scene that happened. And then discovering pieces of their shocker that were not in alignment. And how they were brought back and it was identified what you can do to make sure you're balanced. The thing is, a lot of our sisters are not balanced because they're giving so much of themselves away that it creates imbalance. And then the amazing offering and purification in the waterfall. It was a test. It tested your stamina because we had to walk down a lot of stairs and look back and realize we had to climb those same stairs. It encouraged you to focus on having faith. Not their faith but your faith. And then when you stepped into that waterfall, it encouraged you to simply let it all wash away. You don't have to hold on to it. The message was there and each and every one that allowed themselves to be present in the experience, got it. And they got it so much that I've made the decision that I'm going back. And I'm taking four phenomenal women with me in September. And they're going to have similar experiences that the ladies had last month. But I'm going to take it a little further and I'm being allowed to now teach and reveal. And Grandma Jenny will be all up in the house. But I had to step back for a minute and just be an observer. This blissfully Bali retreat is about you inviting in the happiness that you keep yearning for but not allowing to truly come in. And part of the reason it's not truly coming in is because there's so much sitting inside of you that you're choosing not to release and you're choosing not to work through. And so you remain stuck. And so you sit and you talk yourself out of doing certain things simply because it's not the right time. It's not the right people. I can't do this alone. Let me tell you, the sisterhood that you find when you come to these retreats. You don't need to bring your family members and your besties with you. I actually like to discourage it because I want you to be present. That Virginia and, 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 and Gidget will tell you, I'll be like, y'all two can't sit together. Don't, don't sit over here because I want to forge new relationships because you'll be surprised what you discover about the other women who are just like you, who are carrying some weight and they're there for the same purpose, to feel free and feel happiness. So if Blissfully Bali is something that you're truly interested in, I encourage you to go to bit.ly backslash blissfully Bali and explore the information. Don't give yourself excuses of why you can't do it. Put it out in the universe and give yourself reasons of why you should do it, why you are worthy of it, why you are deserving. You don't want to keep living in the past. 
too much pain back there. Come and join the present because your future, oh yeah, it's filled with happiness. You just have to believe it. I want to wish you all a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. If this message resonates with you, I encourage you to share it with another phenomenal woman around the globe. And by the way, my retreats are open to all women. Key word here is women, not children, but women, because this is about your transformation, your transformation. Have a good afternoon.